Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Sometimes being a museum ship curator isn't about what you know, it's about who you know. Uh, specifically people who know things about uh, stuff that you're not as familiar with. So last week we posted a video uh, where we finally found out some extra information about our helicopter. Uh, that was one of those situations where we didn't know that we didn't know this information until we found out uh, that we had an Embark helicopter and it had a name in the 80s. Uh, so that's really cool. Check out the link in the video down below. And uh, one of my peers at the Navy Museum in Washington, D.C. reached out and said, hey, did you know I flew that type of helicopter? And I did not. I knew that he flew the uh, newer H-60 uh, Seahawk type uh, or Blackhawk type helicopters, depending on which service you're in. And um, so he started telling me some more stuff about helicopter operations, including what all of our flight deck markings mean. Now, unfortunately, uh, because we have this set up as an event space right now, you don't get the clearest picture of the flight deck markings, but we're going to go through the various markings and uh, talk about what they mean. So the first one is this center line right here that comes up the uh, dead center on the flight deck. That is the line that the pilot lines up on when he's coming up the ship and getting ready to land. American military helicopters have the pilot's seat on the right-hand side. That's right, we use British rules of the road for helicopter pilots. That's partially because American military helicopters' rotors spin counterclockwise, which means if the rotors stop, the helicopter body starts to spin clockwise. So if a pilot is lining up here for the ship, he's on the right-hand side, he's going to approach to the left of this line so that he's able to look down right out his window at it. And it means that if there's some sort of uh, incident, the, the turbulence from the wind that he's moving around or, or some sort of mechanical failure, the helicopter's gonna spin out to the right away from the ship and not impact the deck of the ship. Water is softer than battleship flight deck. The next important thing to point out is the landing circle here on the flight deck. Any of the types of helicopters that are able to operate off of this flight deck, which for Iowa-class battleships, I believe uh, were any type of helicopter the Navy was using, all the way up to the, the very large sea stallions, um, it means that as long as they keep their nose landing gear inside of this circle, they've got plenty of clearance. Their, their rotor blades are not gonna hit some obstruction, such as the ship's superstructure. And that's much less of a problem here on the battleship where we're uh, pretty flat back after we've got a lot of room here. Uh, but on other ships, it's pretty important. Uh, you do have to worry about the gun barrels of turret number three, which you can't really see because of the tent here, but they're not too far in that direction. So, next up is the big circle that's in the middle of the circle that we just talked about. <sighs> this circle is called the butthole because sailors are a bunch of 18 year old boys uh, and because you want your butt right over this as you come and land on the ship. For the next two, we've got our T line and our T circles. So our T line is the forward one and it's a line of hash marks that looks sort of like the letter T. Again, sailor's not very creative when it comes to naming things. This is the forwardmost position you want your rotor hub to be when you're doing vertical replenishment. And then the T circles back here at the aft end, same situation except it alternates T circle, T circle, so you've got that, that visual indicator. Uh, that is telling you the aftmost distance where you want your uh, center rotor blade. And again, this is, this is helping you position so you're over the flight deck and you're dropping your cargo on a flat area, not uh, somewhere where you're going to run uh, rotor blades into something. Again, uh, the battleship has a huge flat area at the stern, but this looks like a relatively small area. Well, there are uh, significantly larger helicopters than the 
H2s or the uh, H60s that we would normally operate, such as uh, CH46s and CH53s that are significantly heavier lifting that uh, some of them have, uh, the CH46 has multiple rotor blades. Um, so, so they're gonna have much longer reaches with their rotor blades where they don't wanna impact things like uh, the JDavid or the flagstaff at the fantail, or again, the gun barrels, the uh, film projection booth or any of this stuff here on the aft end of the deck. Next up, on the left-hand side of the flight deck, there's a letter, little letter H right over here. This is the lineup point for if the helicopter is doing an in-flight refueling. This is where they are trying to get their refueling boom centered over. So if they hover right here, then the battleship's flight deck crew can bring out the refueling hose. They can winch it up, plug it in, get their fuel without having to touch down. And the final line back here on the flight deck is the safety line. You can probably already guess what this one is for, but this line that goes Thor chips uh, is just letting everybody know you do not cross this line without permission. Rotor blades and people's heads do not mix well. So the landing signals officer will be able, looking up from uh, his vantage point above turret three, can tell when the rotor has reduced speed enough that it's safe for the crew to go forward from this point. Uh, interestingly, there's no line aft. That's because you've just got the aft end of the ship. Uh, on most ships, the flight deck is dead astern. The Iowas do have a little bit of an area back there, but not enough that it was worth uh, painting a line. There is just the edge of the flight deck there and then the 40 millimeter gun tubs. In addition to the painted lines, there's also lights all over the place, which are very useful for, uh, which are very useful for low visibility situations. We might talk about those in a future video when I understand them a little bit more. Uh, the other interesting thing about the flight deck lines here are originally, New Jersey didn't have flight deck lines. During the Korean War, there was nothing. It was the Wild West back here. During the Vietnam War, the flight deck line goes side to side. So it seems like helicopters would come up alongside the ship, uh, probably on this side actually, and then just come across the line to center and touch down. Originally in the 1980s, New Jersey had a diagonal line coming in across the stern. But for whatever reason, that proved to be too complicated, probably because we had the capability of operating several different types of helicopters with different performance conditions. And so the later Iowa-class battleships just had, or the later activated Iowa-class battleships just had uh, the line coming up center like us, and we eventually get refit with that line there. And we've talked about this in previous video, but when they did that, they also had to change the flight deck lights. So the fact that we have both diagonal and uh, straight lights tells us that they had it one way and changed it, which we can verify from pictures. While the other battleships do not have those second sets of lights in there because they just installed it the easy way the first time. Have you ever gotten to fly in a helicopter? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the ship. Thanks for watching.